Hello everyone, it's Miss McDermott here, and I am here to welcome you to back to school and to kind of set you up for our virtual um, kindergarten year this year. So I'm doing this video on behalf of a few classrooms, so I, I will go through things sort of generally, and then I might just pause the video and give you more specifics for our class. So the first thing you need to know is that virtual um, school has some, some really cool pluses. We also have some obviously some minuses. So the the pluses that I'm gonna focus on are, um, it's really cool to, to get to know the families more and to be in people's homes and to learn together, which is really fun. Um, and that happens best when we communicate well. So each, um, each class will communicate with uh, families in different ways almost every class emails. Um, and then on top of that, they might have some type of app where they might ask you to use something like Remind or Class Dojo, maybe sometimes Seesaw, which I think they're not encouraging us to use this year. And that's just for like those emergency type things. And that way you get like a text message really quickly. Um, so just say, for example, the board's um, internet isn't working well or Google Classroom has been down today. So then that way they'll send a message out quickly and that way everybody knows quickly. Or if you and your end have had some type of technology problem, you can send something to us quickly. Um, that way we can all be on the same page. Or if, you know, sometimes we might have something worked out with a student um, that they have a break. So I can just text mom or dad or whoever, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, um, whoever's there, I can text them and say, you know, this person is taking a break for 10 minutes. So that way, you know, it's just to keep everybody in the know. Um, don't be shy about telling us what um, is best for your child, because that is also going to help too. So if you notice that your child, um, you know, is really struggling with an activity, um, don't be shy about letting us know that. Um, we can, we, you can actually see a fair amount through this through a screen, but at the same time, they're, they're, they're pretty small. So um, there might be small details that we might miss. So don't be shy about sending us an email um, and just letting us know. Um, let's see here. And then this year there, we will be always on, or the teachers will always be on during flex time too. So we can always make a time to meet. We can call you. I know in our class, we usually call parents the first week just to touch base and like have a conversation. Um, but I mean, you can always email us and we can book a meeting through our Google Meet time. And when students are doing flex time, which I will explain in a few minutes, um, then that's a great time for us to meet with you as well. Uh, in terms of, so I'll go to flex time now. So we have uh, 180 minutes of synchronous learning. That means like face-to-face -face, um, learning through the computer. Um, that could be in small groups. It could be in big groups. Um, it could be it could be doing lots of different types of activities. Uh, so, and then the other, the rest of the time for the day would be what's considered flex time. Synchronous time could also be called real time learning too. So flex time or asynchronous time is time where basically in a classroom, for example, where students would be like in, in kindergarten classroom, we would they would be playing and exploring. Um, so in your home, they're going to do the same sort of things. And teachers will have a list of different types of activities that you can do during that time. But it's okay to let them play. If you have Lego, they can play Lego. If they, I mean, because every every household will have different activities. It's a great time to get outside and get some exercise. Oh, next because... thing is materials. So I like to have all my materials kind of in a basket because, um, well, actually, so before I even get to materials, we should talk about where you're gonna set up your space. So one thing that we, we often talk to the kids about quickly in the year is, you know, making sure that your your family is okay with you. It, you should probably have a spot to be. Now, some families are okay with children taking devices to different areas, but I always say to a child, ask your parent first and make sure that you have that dis discussion with your child so that they know what the, what the sort of rules are about how you would like to see that go in your home. 
One big thing is, is we always make sure they don't bring their device to with them to the bathroom, which has happened on occasion, um, which, you know, it's a great thing that that person is being studious and doesn't want to miss anything. Um, however, it's OK to go take a bathroom break, too. And, <laughs> and we don't need to go with you to the bathroom. Um, try to be mindful um, of things like being in a kind of quiet space as best you can, um, whether you might need to have a pair of headphones or not. Um, whether your child will tolerate wearing them and thinking about things like distractions. So, you know, if there's a TV in the background, maybe trying to sort of arrange your, your, um, your device so that, that the child's not seeing the TV in the background. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, and then we get to materials. So for my, my materials, I like to have them in a basket. That way, if I'm going from a, one place to another, I have them all ready to go. So, you know, every teacher will ask for you to have sort of staples or things to have on hand. And they might be slightly different, but I think for the most part, you're going to get the same sort of things. So in our classroom, we ask families to have pencils, obviously. Yes, you have pencils. I was actually placed this thing out so you can see. So I have a bin here and in this bin I have I have a whole bunch of pencils and for me I have pens but I also have white erase markers um, and I have erasers and I also have a pencil sharpener and I have markers. Markers, I actually find I ask often ask children to use markers more often than I ask them to use pencil just because I can see what they're doing more. Um, if it's a pencil, it's it's a little bit trickier for me to see their writing. Um, I ask, we often ask them to have a pair of scissors. This is a pair, a cool pair, actually from the Dollar Tree. They're $1.25. And for our students who are just learning, they have this little, this little sort of piece here that kind of helps it kick back for them when they're cutting. So when their little hands aren't quite strong enough, it makes it a little easier. So I think that's a great deal for $1.25 and they're pretty decent scissors. Um, but you know, anything that is small enough that they can hold, like I don't know if I would trust depending on your child's level. If your child isn't quite ready for this, you might want to consider something like this. Um, these are pretty good. I think I would trust my toddler with these. And, um, but if you even might need to look into something like this, so this is something where again, if your child does not quite have the strength, the hand strength yet, this will help. Um, and I think you can find these at, uh, Scholar's Choice. I think my children have found me this morning. So I'm going to pause this right here. Good morning. I'm back. Sorry, that took a little longer. Obviously, I've had a wardrobe change, different day, but that's okay. So we're in materials. I mentioned earlier about whiteboards. So a lot of times we are going to be doing some type of writing or drawing where we don't necessarily need to keep it. And so often just for, you know, to save paper and to be a little bit environmentally conscious, we might ask your child to write on a whiteboard. You don't have to. Paper can always be used instead. But if you would like to use a whiteboard, it's a nice option. So this one again is from the Dollar Tree. I love the Dollar Tree. It's everything's a dollar twenty-five, um, and you can get little white erase markers there too that have a little eraser tip. So then the nice thing with this too is that they could even write, say, their answer right on here, and then they could hold it up um, like that. Um, but if you didn't have that or you didn't want to um, go out and get that, which is totally understandable, just taking a plain piece of um, or this is a page protector that you again can get from the dollar store and just taking like a plain piece of paper and putting it in the page protector you have cardstock even better or construction paper even better because they'll be a little firmer and now you can take this and your child can write on this instead this obviously that marker is not that dark but um and then it will wipe right off just like a white erase marker or right like a white erase board so that's a nice little tip if you'd like to try and have something like that available but again it's not necessary 
Uh, another thing that we do like to have is Play-Doh. There's all sorts of research about Play-Doh and, and using Play-Doh to help build up your um, fine motor muscles and your hands. It's very tactile, which is where our learners are in kindergarten. Uh, and we use this a lot. So just, you can get, again, you can get a, a container for $1.25 at the Dollar Tree. We'll also send you some like how to make it at home, which is also a whole bunch of learning. You can, there's measuring and there's like recipe reading and procedure, um, procedural reading and talking about procedures and sequencing. And so um, we'll send you a like a, a recipe as well. If you'd like to try making it with your child, that's, that could be your learning activity for the day. Um, a glue stick, either glue stick or white glue. It's probably good to have both if you could because you'll need them for different things. But one or the other would be ideal. And for the most part, that is all we will ask you to have on hand on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, there might be a, a few more odd, odd things to have. Um, but for the most part, that's it. Our class in particular sends out a materials list every Friday. So that gives you the Friday and the weekend to get it. We also organize it by day. So we'll say Monday, you need to have this and Tuesday, you need to have this. We try our best to keep it down. Um, and if you can't get any of those items, please email us and we will, we will accommodate you or really, whether we'll change the activity or, um, we may even try to, to, in certain cases, try to drop things off, um, but for the most part, we try to send it out early so that, that way it gives you time. And you even know, like, you'll know Monday, you'll need to have this. Or if you don't get a chance to go out on the weekend, you know, you'll have a certain day. But again, we try to keep it very minimal. And that's just the stuff that you'll need on top of the essentials. Um, and again, we don't like asking for very much. At the same time, it's going to help us to make uh, the learning more engaging for kids too. So, but please, please, please be... Um, open with us and let us know if, if what we're asking is too much because we don't want to overwhelm you and we want to make sure that we're being equitable for everyone. So, and I, that is all the materials part I think that we need to go through. Um, there is a little bit about, I want to go on a little bit about um, how to get into your Google Meet. Um, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. And the only other thing was, oh, um, so a little bit about self-regulation, what that might look like. So in class, we would never ask kindergarten kids, especially like that first month, they don't usually sit for any longer than five or 10 minutes in a, in a group setting. So we're asking your child to sit for a lot longer than that. So understand that it's going to take a while um, for them to kind of get used to it. Um, I would say probably within the first like month, um, it, you, there is a huge, it's a huge learning curve for them. Just all the things that they're learning with the technology, FYI, it's almost like learning a whole other language, which is pretty cool. And I do believe there's lots of problem solving involved in using, um, doing virtual learning as well, which is a really awesome asset to have. Um, but yes, it does take some patience and they might get frustrated. So if you see your child bouncing around or moving around, uh, that's okay. I, um, you know, it's going to take some time for them to kind of get used to kind of being in one spot and hate like, they, but they will get there and we'll, we'll help them with getting there. And if they need to play Lego or color while they're watching, that's a good thing. It's helping them to sort of stay focused. If they're doing something that's not helping them stay focused, that that's not good. But if they can do something that kind of helps them stay focused, such as coloring, such as, you know, playing with some type of like sort of toy that doesn't take away or distract them, then that's not necessarily bad. So just be patient um, with your child and, and, you know, make sure you chat with us um, and, and we'll also be looking out for those types of things. Um, and it does take time to build stamina. So I just wanted to mention that. And then finally, I just wanted to quickly touch on the, sorry, on the flex time versus the um, synchronous time. So um, for the most part, those of you who were with us last year, for the most part, everything will stay the same. There is a few exceptions. So flex time, as I said earlier, is the time where students would be going and doing activities on their own. Um, and um, synchronous or real-time learning is where they are in class with us. So during the synchronous time, we might have some play group time. 
And in that playgroup time would be more of a structured playgroup. And then during the flex time, we will also be hosting playgroups eventually, not quite right away, because we need to kind of work on some of those skills first. But that would be more of, of a time where kids can meet with other peers and sort of play games and kind of hang out together, um, just like they would in a classroom. So, and you know, you might be thinking to yourself, how are they going to play together through the computer? You know, the kids always amaze us and they come up with cool and interesting ideas all the time. And it actually works really well. In some ways, I would say it works even better than in person. So um, in some ways. So, you know, again, just be patient with us. These things take time. We're going to, we will get there. Uh, if you have any ideas of anything you would like to bring into our classroom or any ideas of things that we could try, please make sure you let us know. And already so many of you have been on top of the ball, sending us emails. You all seem very eager. So I'm really excited to get to work with you, getting to work with you this year. And uh, let's go team. Woohoo!